Howdy folks, my name is Dr. Nathan Beale and I'm an Australian counsellor and counselling educator. And today I'm going to show counselling students how to make the most effective use of their study time, particularly when they've got lots of significantly um, complex or large PDF readings to do and how to actually read them more efficiently and effectively and um, generate more learning from them. Okay, so first of all, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have the latest version of Edge loaded on your system. Now, Edge is Microsoft's browser, and you can see that's on my screen at the moment. And um, you'll see I'm on the Bing um, screen. Now, we, if we look at the top right-hand corner, we have a Bing little um, menu which comes out when I point at it. And um, so that's really what we're wanting to, to do to access that um, AI, the artificial intelligence. Now, the other thing you want to do if you want Bing, to, Bing AI to assist you with reading your PDFs is that we want to associate the Edge browser with PDF files. So if you right click on the PDF file and um, if you, I'll just pull over my screen now. Um, just to show you, right click on it, open with, and you want it to be um, Microsoft Edge, okay? And when you click on that, then, um, or if you click on choose another app, this one will do it permanently. Click on there and press always. That will link your PDF. So every time you double click on them, they're going to open up into your, um, your viewer in your Edge browser. Okay, so the next step is I've double clicked on one of those files and you can see that I have a chapter that um, in the, the teaching I'm doing at the moment, students need to read and they've got several chapters or, or articles and or articles to read. So, but for this one, we're just opening up one chapter and I'm going to click on that again so that can open up. And first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in to the the window down here um, using only the current web page context which is this summarize the key points okay so I'm hitting the um, little button there just gonna and it's um, thinking 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 so now it's just read the entire book chapter in several in only a few seconds and you can see it summarizing this chapter Okay, so you can go in and, well, first of all, it'll ask you some questions that you can type. So um, you can ask, you know, how do professional organizations enforce ethical? Can you give an example of a specialty practice? Let's just try this one, see what this asks. So it's probably going to um, look at this reading, hopefully. Yes, it stayed with the reading based on the current. So it remembers the context that you're, um, that you're talking about, that you're asking about. Okay, so it normally pauses and then it'll ask some more questions. Now, what you can do if you want to dig down a bit deeper, you can, or if you want to make it more structured, you can ask it to provide, say, three key dot points or 10 key dot points if you want with descriptions of the main themes in this reading. Okay, so using only the current web page context, provide me with three key dot points with descriptions of the main themes in the readings. Okay, so it's going to think some more now. So what you can also do now is if you want to, you can say provide me using this current web page only, provide me with more information on professional ethics versus legally mandated ethics. Okay, so you can hone in and zoom in on certain parts that you wish. Now, this is all, you know, this is giving you a, a rough context or a rough summary, which means that when you do go in to read it, you're, you're not going in there trying to navigate and make sense of all these words. You've got this sort of basic structure of the reading, and then you can go in and it'll be easier to read and easier to, to learn from. Um, you're not coming in there cold, so to speak. Now, after you've read it, you can ask it to test you on what's in the reading and Testing yourself will enable you to have um, help to practice memorizing and recalling from memory, and this is a way you'll enhance your learning. 
Okay, so what I've asked is using only the current web page context, ask me three multiple choice questions drawn from this web page. Okay, so um, what it's got here is what is the primary goal of this textbook? I'd you know I'd interpret that as text chapter to provide a history of counseling and psychotherapy to help readers become ethically sensitive, blah, blah, blah. So it's given you three particular um, questions from the reading. And then what you can do is you can try and answer those. And then you can come in and um, ask it to give you the answers to those questions. So you can check the answers. So here I've put that in the text. And I've asked also for an explanation for why these are correct. Okay, there it is. Okay, so that's um that's another way of using it. You can also ask you ask it to give you, and now this is a little bit outside of the scope of the original of, of this recording, but you can also ask it to give you case studies on particular topics that may be in the chapter as well. So you can have a look and see what that might look like in practice. I'm not gonna go through it here, but um, certainly that's an option. And um, also, in my view, probably ChatGPT is probably better to use than this particular thing. It tends to give you more detailed answers about everything. But this one's particularly good because without using a, an add-on for ChatGPT, it won't actually look at your PDF files. If you do have an add-on, sure, you can upload the PDF files and ask these types of questions. But um, this is just a, another version of it, um, which enables you to, to have it to examine and study and analyze, um, analyze your readings for you. Now, I just want to give a um, little bit of extra guidance in terms of this is not to replace your learning, okay? So really, as a counsellor, when you're in the room with a client, you need to have that knowledge in the back of your mind. You need to know your stuff. You cannot rely on chat GPT and AI and, and Bing AI to, to learn for you. Um, your, it's to assist your learning, not replace your learning. So that's really important. The other thing I'd say is do not copy and paste it and put it into your essays. Do not copy and paste it and put it into your drafts with the intention that you're going to change it around for your essays, okay? Because um, when people are marking your paper and when you submit your paper, the markers are assuming it is your paper, that it has come from your understanding, not from an AI's understanding, okay? So it's really, we're, um, we're not going to give the degree to the AI, to Bing, we're going to give the degree to you at the end of your training. So we actually need you to be um, submitting your own work. And given that this is on ethics, this reading, um, this is actually an ethical issue to make sure that you're, um, you're using it in an ethical manner. So what I'd encourage people to do is play around with it. Um, you can try it with different readings. You can try it with different PDFs. Um, and w one thing I found is that when, if you give it a very long PDF, it may not give you a very good quality answer or it may give you a very brief answer. So sometimes I think that a chapter length or a journal article is probably you know, the limit between when it'll give you good quality information and good quality summary. Um, or the other thing to be mindful of is ChatGPT doesn't always give you accurate, or Bing I should say, Bing AI doesn't always give you accurate information. Okay, so hence don't rely on it solely as an information source. Um, it is really useful to, as a, using it for particular ways, um, for, as a learning tool, but um, I would always recommend going back to the source, just like you do with your, all your research, you go back to the original source and skim read it or um, read it slowly, whichever way, how you want to digest that information. But um, don't, don't rely totally on the, the summary um, or on the information that being AI gives you because it may not have interpreted or it might add stuff that's not there or not quite understand things um, the way it needs to be understood. Hopefully you've got some ideas for utilizing Bing AI to help process and um, navigate and manage the data in your PDF readings. And um, certainly feel free to drop me a few comments in the um, YouTube um, comments and um, let me know how it goes and what difference it might make for your studies. Thanks very much.